There's a surplus of food in the world, but in South Africa alone, around two million people go hungry each day. Zayan Khan is a green activist who is passionate about helping communities to achieve food security. And she discussed some solutions with Karishma. All too often, topics such as land reform and food security are discussed in offices and auditoriums with no real sense of connection with the people who actually experience hunger or the planet as a whole. In contrast, Zayan Khan believes in keeping in touch with the natural environment and the communities she works with. And an early morning walk with a dog helps to feed her soul, focus her mind and keep her grounded. My interest certainly peaked when I heard the terms food activist and seed librarian used to describe Zion Khan. I cannot wait to meet this dynamic lady and find out more about the fascinating work that she does. Hi, puppy. Zion. Hello. I am so excited for today. Thank you so much for coming. I've put some tea on. Would you like some tea and I'll serve it to you in the garden? I'd love that. Biology and geography were Zayan's favorite subjects at school, while her strong points lay in journalism and language. And now she combines all these fields in her work. Here we go. Thank you so Pleasure. much. Pleasure. Zayan, what exactly is a food activist? So it's someone who's working towards a food system that is equitable. So access to good, healthy food for everyone. And now you are also a seed librarian. At the heart of the food system or of food is seed, which has been part of my research for the last few years. And we realized that we needed a seed library that was more accessible, that could tell the stories of seed a lot easier. And so I became a seed librarian to try to push that along and connect people who are needing seed as well. Over the years, I've become more and more curious about fermentation and bacteria, and through experimenting, I found that they can be super beneficial. The benefits to fermentation are infinite, and for me, one of the best things is the fact that it can preserve food outside of refrigeration, and so it becomes a solution for a lot of the surplus produce that most of our farmers have around the world. So fermentation is a way to add value to that product, but at the same time, it's full of trillions of microbiota, bacteria and yeast that are making that food a lot more flavorful. Would you be able to show me the process? Of course. <laughs> food security has many facets, and being able to grow food is just one of them. Often farmers have surplus harvests that cost too much to bring to market, and consumers who don't have access to electricity or fridges cannot store food for longer periods. The answer lies in age-old preservation techniques. So this is my studio. I conceive of a lot of the seed plans here, the seed library work, lots of the illustrations, the printing, sometimes ceramics, and sometimes food. And what do we have going on here? So we'll be making our version of kimchi. That requires us to have wilted some cabbage, and we're gonna use carrots today. And then I've already made this mix of pear, ginger, garlic, that's gonna create the paste. Mm, that smells so good. And then this is what's called gochugaru, which is a Korean chili pepper. Now, could you use any vegetables for the kimchi? You could. You essentially want to keep it a little bit soft, but also crunchy. So it could be things like gherkins, cucumbers. You could use onion. Essentially, also be using things like radish, turnip. But you could do beetroot if you wanted to. If you decided you wanted to use something like green pepper, then you have to be careful with your timing because often those will get very soft and then the texture is not so great. You expect that crunch and it's mm, mm, a little bit soft. So how do we get started? First of all, we've weighted this cabbage down and it's been salted. You can do that overnight or for an hour, doesn't matter. And so you just want to rinse that salt off of the cabbage so it's not too salty when it's fermenting. And now we'll be making the paste mixture. You want to take quite a bit of this. In fact, let's just pour it all in. The best bit. So you can add more or less depending how much spiciness you want or how much flavor. So it's a good idea at this stage to taste the paste so that you know that your flavors have properly developed because this is what will kind of develop even further throughout the fermentation. Would you like to try some? I'd love it. Sure. Mm, that really is so good. Yum. So we'll take this jar and we'll layer the cabbage, the carrots and the paste. So the first thing that goes in is a nice big teaspoon of paste. So basically then to help further wilting, 
we take some of the paste and we just paint it. And so we do this so that when we layer it and mush it down, it'll allow for all those liquids to become a brine. So we take it and we fold it to get it into this jar. And don't be too concerned that there's air gaps. All of that will disappear once we start building layers. And then we'll layer in some carrots. Within each layer, you need to add more paste. So you'd add a little bit more after the carrots. And then now we start again. So kimchi, you know, every family has their own recipe. Different regions have their own recipes and styles. But generally, there's always the inclusion of fish sauce. But we're making the vegan version. You really want a very flavorful paste that you can really mix with whichever spices you wish. Okay, and that's the final layer. It is so beautiful. So now we seal it up. And we won't open it again for four weeks. Let's go put it outside. Okay, so we'll store this in here for the next four weeks while it ferments so that it can ooze out all its liquids. It'll begin to smell a little bit. And I keep it here because it's cool, because it's well aerated and out of direct light. And I have some other jars in here. So I've got this one and this one's ready. We can put this in the pantry. So all these jars in this pantry are sourced from local farmers who are within the city, farming on a small scale, organic or something like that, but all grown from seed. So when we open a jar and prepare a soup or prepare something, then we know that exactly this person grew this at that time in this space. And it adds so much value to the eater's experience as well. What is your overall food philosophy? I try to be very conscious of where the food comes from, whether it's the basil that's on your pizza, and that opens up to so many new things because if you need to do that, then you need to actually start meeting your farmer. And that's not that difficult to do in a place like Cape Town because there are so many fishers and farmers and chefs and people who are working within the food system. Sam, this was fascinating. Thank you so much for your time, but also for the indispensable work that you do. Thank you so much. It's been a really fun day.